Good morning, folks. We've got a number of interesting stories to hit today, and we look ahead to a major storm system about to hit the U.S. We're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our sun were indeed calm. Little pops at a few active regions, sizable coronal holes, and a thin but long plasma filament on the south just behind the coronal hole. Watching numerous aspects today for potential eruption, and the solar wind from that coronal hole should be arriving this weekend. The solar wind is currently quite calm at Earth along with geomagnetic conditions. Major storm in the USA starts tonight. The low drives out of the Rockies and drops feet of snow while bringing dangerous storms to the southeastern convergence tail. As it moves eastward in the early part of next week, a second storm rolls in to add to the last one. Rough week coming up for some. Let's go to deep space next, where they believe now it's not supernova, but star clusters that are able to accelerate the highest energy cosmic rays. Well, I might argue that star clusters are excellent places to find stars which happen to like to nova, and that those in clusters have a much higher chance of interaction-driven stellar outbursting. Up next, new magnetic mapping of Antarctica shows how it's connected to its neighboring continents. Mainstream Earth timeline used here, but an excellent visual with the ability to see some of the continuities now broken from the motion of history. Speaking of history, the world's oldest crater is not a crater. Well, maybe. They are relying on a dating method that is beyond challenge to suggest that this crater's heat signature came some millions of years after the formation of the crater, which they also can't explain. That is the same dating method that has major problems which we've seen at long scales, and which lacks the tools in the toolbox to deal with rapid isotopic modulation or deposition. Up next it's GOSI, and the new gravity mapping of Earth, but used to see beneath the ground. They still rely on absurd visuals of the interior rather than attempting to visualize the LLSVP structures, and their out-of-scale looks at the low-velocity zone, which they've labeled as the MOHO discontinuity, should give pause to those who understand the implications of such millennial-scale ice changes on the surface, deforming the mantle to such a degree, at least not if the interior of the planet is what they say it is. Up next, folks, a double story that may require veteran observer status for that second part. This planet, they say, is on at least its second atmosphere. I can't imagine why it might not be the third or fourth. It's a combination of the planet having major outgassing and replenishment potential, while also having virtually no protection from atmosphere-stripping stellar activity nearby. It's important to note their animation is being utterly correct. Material is not just lost in the magnetic tail of the system. We know that Earth throws out an oxygen layer upon CME arrival. It's what scares many about the weakening magnetic field of Earth as it should increase that potential. But also, folks, there is something to be said for the application of an energetic change in an all-out, all-directions release of a top layer like maybe everything we've shown in the literature about stars interacting, and the now ten times greater number of scenarios that result in nova events, maybe like the galactic current sheet and its cyclical encounter with the sun. We greatly appreciate your support. Find our books, hats, shirts, and more at otf.cells.com. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.